I'm always excited to leave the shores of this country to explore different cultures and places. But trust me, two weeks after, my body practically begins to itch. And when I return to the shores of Nigeria and I inhale the dust, I see people hurling salt at each other. I see the hawkers trading chin chin and chips. I'm happy once again and I'm glad to be home. This is Vinji with Game Changers, where we capture success from different perspectives. We delve into the minds of people who celebrated brands and careers, who have turned their dreams into realities and their ideas into lucrative empires. I'm your host, Shay Banigbe, and you're welcome to the show. See you when I get back. Welcome back to the show, everyone. And yes, I'm excited because our game changer for today is female with brains, sass, everything, and more than you know that. She is a multi award winning entrepreneur, medical doctor, trainee pilot, and the founder of Flying Doctors. She's it's West Africa's first indigenous air ambulance service. She's recognized for her extraordinary business acumen in pioneering air ambulance services in Nigeria. Her 10-year-old company now has a staff strength of about 50 people, yeah. Her dream is to have an Africa where nobody dies because they are the wrong place at the wrong time. Let's meet the woman who is putting medical choppers at our door. Welcome to the show with me, Dr. Ola Orekuri Brown. I have to get used to the brown. You're welcome, Ola. <laughs> Thank you for nice that. Nice to have you on Very the show. Very nice welcome. And you are to way you. more beautiful than I expected. I don't think media is capturing the right... Right angle. <laughs> Maybe I don't even encourage them to capture the right angle. So if you see pictures of me in the press, they're usually, they're usually pretty plain. And, okay. you know, so I, it's not... You're, it's you're not... usually glam, you know, and you know, you're, got... you're gorgeous. Yeah, you Thank are. you. Yeah, so good, so good to meet you. Um, so, of course, we've researched, and I'm sure it, quite a number of people know that um, what got you into what you're doing today was... You know, as a result of a tragic incident, you were you lived all your life abroad actually in the US and you were in Nigeria for some reason with your sister and she had there was an emergency, she, there was no there were no resources to you know rush her to get the needed health care and she died. Mm -hmm. And that led to you choosing to start flying doctors. Mm -hmm. But what what struck me in that story though was you know, I relate with Nigerians every day and the mm -hmm. average person when if or if and when they go through something as traumatic as that would we'll tell you i'm leaving and i'll never come back to this country and most people would not even think of correcting that anomaly why why was it different for you um i think that there's two mindsets two types of mindsets that you find anywhere in the world but especially in nigeria um there's like a mindset that says you know there's nothing that i can do about this situation and a lot of the time, that's not a bad mindset to have at all, that I'm not in control of this thing, that it was up to God, and that, you know, there's nothing that I can do about the situation. Then there's another mindset where you start to think, maybe there's something that I can do about this situation. I'm fully in control of my destiny. And you see different personalities. Mm -hmm. So I even see the way that you behave when you're on set. You're always trying to make sure that everything is, it, it yeah, is the way it should be. Plan. You feel like you're fully in control yeah. of um, your space. Um, but there are people that don't have that personality and don't feel like that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing to feel like. Um, but I'm very, I, I yeah, think we're quite person. similar, yeah, <laughs> in terms of I always feel like there's something that I can do about every situation. Um, and I'm very uh, sort of passionate about being completely in control of my destiny. Um, and I've always wanted to work in healthcare anyway. But when that happened, I... I guess it was brought to my attention in a really tragic way that emergency services in Africa and especially Nigeria aren't as developed um, as they were in the UK. And um, I decided to try and solve that problem in the best way I knew how. You said something critical. I, I have to pick on that. You said some people just accept things the way they are and some people believe they can change things. You, you seem to make it sound as though it's okay to always accept things the way they are. Shouldn't everyone try to be like you? That is, no. choose to change their... <laughs> and it's, even if it's just your little environment, what do you encourage? I don't think everybody can be that way. And I don't think sometimes when you try and push people to be something that they're not is not naturally their personality, 
um, then you find that you know there's a kind of aggressive back. reaction. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I think that people should be allowed to embrace their own personalities. Some mm. people are kind of rather shy and withdrawn okay. and not so aggressive. And some people are more aggressive. And I'm definitely part of the more aggressive, aggressive people. Ones, yeah. But um, you know, when I see somebody's personality and I know that they're not that aggressive, then I try and nurture whatever their talent might be. Okay. I think that's amazing. I mean, I've learned something new. That, that, I think that is such an amazing perspective you have there. So most, I'm an entrepreneur, and I know that you know, most people shy away from capital-intensive sectors. Mm -hmm. But you, bold-hearted, went into the aviation industry. And not just even the normal, you went into, the, you know, you went into it from the healthcare perspective. It could not have been cheap. Mm -hmm. How easy was it you know, getting funding for your idea? Um, well, I wasn't bankable at the time, as you can imagine. I graduated from medicine and um, I actually thought that my medical degree completely qualified me to run an air ambulance company and I was very, very wrong. And soon the bankers told me how wrong I was. <laughs> um, and there was a time when I actually ran into some financial difficulty within the first few years um, of my business. And it was so funny trying to explain um, to a financier, a mm. banker, how I'd come into um, that problem. Mm. So he was asking me questions about the business and I couldn't answer him. Okay. So he was asking me like, you know, that, okay, so tell me about your cash flow. And I was answering with my own expertise. So he'd say, tell me about your cash flow. And I'd say, well, you know, we are transporting babies with tetralogy of fallow <laughs> who are dependent on oxygen. And he's like, no, 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 no. I need your cash flow. What is, you know, and I couldn't. Those, those I was, terms, those yeah, financial I, terms. I, I was trying to answer, like, with my medical knowledge that this was the case. This was the patient. Can't you understand this, that someone is understand, suffering? You know, yeah. this, and we're saving lives here. And he kept on saying that, you know, Ola, I don't think you understand your business. I think you understand a lot about medicine. But I don't think you understand why you're in this problem in the first place. And that means that I cannot give you a facility. Why? Because you're not going to be able to pay back if you don't understand the fundamentals of finance. So he sat me down and told me, look, these are the things that you need to understand to be able to grow this business. And for me to be able to give you any facility or any loan, I need to be sure that you have a firm grip of what mm -hmm. your business is about. Your business is not purely medical. It's about money. It's about how quickly you get paid. Yeah. In fact, if you had renegotiated with your clients better before coming to me or a few months ago, then you will not be in my office in the first place. And he was like, you know, I don't want to see you ever crying in my office again. <laughs> <laughs> because the tears don't mean anything to me. Yeah, we're a bank and yeah. we're looking for money. You need to be able to pay back. These tears cannot move me. Many people have cried before. All right. When so, we return, you're going to tell us exactly how you got that money. Because at least now we know that you cried and you don't know what to do. No, this was even like a few years into the into business. Into the business. Um, but I think that my major lesson there, yeah, okay. even though I've been running the business for some time, yeah. I didn't understand the business of healthcare and I didn't understand the business of my business. I knew the medical side of things, but I quickly had to learn to understand the finance side of things as well um, and um, make sure that I was making the right financial decisions um, for my business. Yeah, but when we return though, you're still going to tell me, you started a business, you must have needed money. You're going to tell me whether you borrowed or you, Absolutely. you know, yeah, I, I, we want to know the specifics. So someone out there wants to, you know, understand what exactly, you know, can be done. And you've got great skin. So when we're here, you're also going to tell us what your beauty routine is. See you when we get back. Okay. Welcome, and I'm still speaking with Dr. Ola Orekonri Brown. Don't forget to drop your comments, feedback, and whatever it is you want to tell us on our social media pages at the BWG Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So, before we get back into the meat of things, mm -hmm. why or well, what's your daily routine to having good skin? I don't really have a daily or weekly routine. I guess I drink a lot of water. Okay. Um, and I drink a lot of fruit juice. 
and um, yeah, I wash my face. I take off my makeup with a cleanser before, but it's not anything. Okay, yeah, I, don't, that's something. I don't have any expensive no, that's Korean okay. products or anything <laughs> like that. That's fine. That's good enough. I mean, that I am. So that's good mm. enough. Yeah. So how did you get money? The initial funds. I, I didn't. Off? I did. I never raised capital. Okay. So um, I think that, and I, I mean, a lot of people watching might be in that situation where they're like unbankable for some reason. They don't have a credit history and they don't have um, a rich. Collateral, a rich family anything, yeah. that has like collateral. So I, I didn't raise capital. Um, I went to my clients, uh, my potential clients, and I said that this is what I want to do, but I don't have the money to lease an aircraft. Can you give me a letter of interest or at least a guarantee mm -hmm. that um, if I lease this aircraft, you'll be able to pay me um, the money, the mm -hmm. retainership uh, for the aircraft? Okay. So um, they did, they agreed. And your clients are oil companies? Uh, different kinds of companies. Okay. So um, that's what I did. And then I leased the aircraft or got a provisional lease with that and then was able to pay when they paid me. Amazing. So, But I, I don't think it's actually that amazing. I think that business model is very common. Um, so it's a customer funded business model. And even like the lady that made my dress, for instance, I paid her four weeks in advance. Okay. And probably she took that money from maybe 30 or 40 people. So you're saying, so, have you changed it now? You get them to pay in advance? Is that what you're sorry? saying? Sorry? Do you get people to pay in advance now? Not anymore. But that okay. was how I got my initial startup capital. Okay. I just got um, a few contracts and I used it to pay for my lease. But a lot of people do that. So I don't think it's uncommon. Everybody you, says, no, how, you'd be amazed that how, do you get, how do you get capital? How did you get startup capital? Most people don't raise startup capital. It's either from their savings or they run a customer funded business model. And if your um, product or service is really, really needed. So there was a desperate need for air ambulances at yeah. the time, especially from the oil industry with their offshore um, needs. So it was relatively, I mean, it took me a year, but I could, I could get... No idea you were able to market yes, it. Yes, well I was yeah. able to talk about it. And like the lady that made my dress, I paid her in advance. A lot of people actually, she's never raised capital before either. I spoke to That's her. That's your confidence, really. So she, she hasn't raised capital. The lady that makes my suits, she's, she, doesn't <laughs> she doesn't raise capital, raise capital either. Capital. Yeah, she goes so to her customers and she says, This is what um, I can do. This is the turnaround time. That one, the lady that makes my suits, it's six weeks. Okay. So she keeps your money actually for six weeks and she'll do this with 20, 30 people. Okay, we've learned. So it's a proper yeah. customer funded business yeah. model. And I think that anybody thinking about business, who either does not have a rich daddy or um, does not have, has not worked in industry for some time. So yeah. if you've worked in a bank or something, then you have the contacts yeah. or you have the savings to do it. Yeah. Then you must think about customer uh, funded Creative business models. And I think that there's an, a really interesting, either Harvard Business Review study or Sloan study. And it shows actually 16 different ways that you can run a customer funded business. You're amazed the number of people that walk into banks with business plans expected to uh, get money. Uh, no. Anyway, let's move on. These are institutions, <laughs> they have shareholders. What are they going to tell their shareholders that they on Nigerian paper? Really, really. No, 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 no. But you, know, I, you worked in the National Health Service in the UK for about 10 years. And then you, you come back to Nigeria and you're in the medical industry as well. What would you say you love about our own industry? Oh, she has in the think. healthcare? Oh my gosh. Like what, would you, what would you say excites you about the practicing here? Um, You've what been excites in me world. about Nigeria in general and what made me want to move back is the opportunities. So growing up in England, really the only idea that you guess of Nigeria is what like your parents tell you and what they show you. So it's more you know, Punch, Ovation Magazine, mm. all these things. So it looks like everybody owns a business and everybody is super <laughs> successful. Um, and you also get to see role models that you don't necessarily get to see in the UK. So, for instance, in the UK, I never knew anybody that owned a bank or an airline. Like, most people in our immediate circle of friends were doing, you know, minimum wage jobs, just managing to survive, living month yeah. to month. So Nigeria really painted a picture of opportunity for me where I could sort of um, live a better life than my parents did, mm. um, where I could own my own business and where I could really be um, more successful than I saw most Nigerians in England being at that time. What would you say stands you out though? What is that quality or attribute that people have told you and that you know stands you out of the pack? So, As in a relation to your Yeah, in relation to success and the things you've been able to build. Um... I don't know if anything makes me stand out in particular. I don't really see myself as a standout professional. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, everybody achieves things in their own way. Okay. Um, so what's your own way? 
Uh, my way is by trying to do my best to enhance the conversation about healthcare and running a healthcare business. Um, but I'm not sure that, like, that's, like, I, I, I don't think I have any I can't tell that you, I'm you don't, because I know people not, I don't, I don't, like to blow our horns. No, I don't feel I like I can't tell you, I've spent just a few, I've spent a few minutes with you, and I can tell you a few, you are a fighter, you don't give up, you don't take no. If you had gone to the bank and they had told you, sorry, we can't give you money, the average person would have said, okay, I'm closing shop, but no, you, in fact, you have an investment firm now. Yes. How? From medicine and aviation to finance. finance. So when that banker told me to go and learn about finance, I okay. took it very seriously. Okay. So I took an accounting course um, and I also took a certificate in economics. Um, and I started reading about finance, learning about finance. In, in fact, now when I go to the bank, the bankers are intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, um, because we had a lot of uh, residual profit um, from the years, um, hmm. I decided to start a lot of residual back. profit. But go on, go on. I decided to <laughs> get, start giving back to other businesses and Amazing. see if I could help. I mean, Lagos is a city that has blessed me tremendously. Mm. Um, Lagos is a city that made me a millionaire. Um, so, I wanted to see how I could sort of give back to other companies, um, either seed capital or early stage capital. Um, to help them grow their own companies. Mm -hmm. So one of the companies that we um, invested on very early on as the initial investors was a company called Pay to Stack, which is um, a financial that. technology yeah. company. Yeah. And now they're turning over 10 billion a month. Amazing. Or um, processing 10 billion a Amazing. month. So um, I think that's the happiest part of my journey, not just being able to start my own company, but also being able to, to provide the others. seed capital mm -hmm. and the growth capital um, to help a lot of people so you're start doing their that own for companies. many businesses yes now. well done dr Ola. thank you you are amazing thank she's you. not going anywhere well yet. it's not that amazing it's an investmental <laughs> <laughs> why it's, are you this way why <laughs> can you just own it like breathe in yes this is who i am anyway she's all that but i noticed you just like say no 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 it's common <laughs> she's not common people like her are rare and we all want to be like her so when we get back you'll be meeting our corporate game changer and then ola will be getting in a game with our corporate game changer see you when we get back